All right, so welcome to another laboratory video. This one deals with calorimetry. We've got three different samples here. One is a little beaker with some reddish brown copper metal. So it's copper metal in the form of little beads or copper shot. Then we've got a beaker with some aluminum metal. So this is aluminum shot. And then we have a third beaker that is filled with some small glass beads. So we're going to be determining the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity for each of those three substances. So to begin with, let's just point out the calorimeter we're going to use. The calorimeter we've got here is a coffee cup calorimeter. So there's a styrofoam cup. We've got it just nestled in a glass beaker for some extra insulation in there. And then there's a styrofoam lid, which we will be placing on top to keep the heat inside the calorimeter. And we'll insert a thermometer, a temperature sensor inside the calorimeter to monitor the temperature during the experiment. So why don't we begin, we'll measure out some water. We're gonna put some water into each of the three calorimeters. Now this calorimeter that you want, if you're gonna record some data, this calorimeter we're gonna use for the glass beads. So I'm gonna zero it. You can see in the video the mass there. So right now the balance says zero grams. I'm gonna pour some tap water into the calorimeter. And you wanna record for yourself the mass of the water that we're using. So again, this is gonna be the calorimeter for the glass beads. Now we'll do the same thing for the second calorimeter. This one is gonna be used for copper. So we'll zero the balance. We'll take another beaker of water and we'll add some water to the calorimeter for copper. So record for yourself the mass of water that we've just added to this calorimeter. Our third calorimeter is gonna be used for the aluminum. So this is the same device, a beaker with a styrofoam cup. I'll zero the balance, and now we'll add some tap water. So record for yourself the mass of the water that we're using in the aluminum calorimeter. All right, so I'll pause the video here and we'll get reset for another portion of the experiment. All right, so we also need to record the masses of the three solids that we're gonna determine the heat capacities for. So I'll take another beaker and I'll put that on the balance and zero it. We'll go in the same order. So let's take the copper shot and add that to this beaker. And you can record for yourself the mass of the copper that we're gonna be using. All right, so there's the mass of copper shot that we're gonna pour into its calorimeter. Okay, now we'll do the same thing with another beaker. We'll zero that. This time we'll do the, the, sorry, the glass beads, I guess, will be next. So we'll pour glass beads into here. And you can record for yourself the mass of the glass beads that we're using. And then finally, zero the balance again. And let's figure out the mass of the aluminum shot. The aluminum shot is much larger pieces, All right? So there's the mass of the aluminum shot that we're gonna use in the experiment. All right, so we'll pause the video again and we'll reset. All right, so you may have noticed in the background there's a hot plate and it's got a large beaker of water on it and I'm bringing that water up to boiling. So it's getting close to boiling right now. Let's take a large test tube that's clean and dry and I'm gonna take our copper shot and we'll pour that into the large test tube. All right, and we're gonna take the copper shot and place it into the beaker with the hot water. 
We'll do the same thing with another large test tube. This time the glass shot, being careful not to spill any. Pour that into the large test tube. And we'll add that to the hot water and be sure that the glass sample is fully submerged in the water. Getting a little concerned my water may overflow here. Let's hope that doesn't happen. The aluminum shot is larger, so I need a larger test tube. So I'll grab a, quite a large test tube here and we'll make sure all that aluminum gets in there. And let's add the third test tube and that water is going to get pretty close to overflowing. And we'll put that in there as well. All right, so we've got all three metals now, sorry, the two metals and the glass beads. They're in these test tubes and they're sitting in that water bath. I'm gonna take a little bit of the water out in just a moment so it doesn't overflow. We're gonna get that water boiling and we're gonna let them sit in the boiling water for, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. And we're gonna assume at the, after five or 10 minutes that the temperature of the substances in the test tube is equal to the temperature of the boiling water that they're sitting in. So let's pause the video now and reset. All right, so we are ready to continue. Um, I've got our three calorimeters set up in front of me. We have the copper calorimeter here. It has a vernier temperature sensor in it, which is showing the red temperature on the computer screen there on the iPad. So you can record the initial temperature of the water in the copper calorimeter. The glass calorimeter, so the calorimeter for the glass beads, is the middle one here, and it's the blue middle temperature there. So record the initial temperature of the glass, um, well, the water in the glass calorimeter. The aluminum calorimeter, with its water, there's the green temperature, the third one, the initial temperature of the water in there. The small differences you see there, the, temp the water is all at room temperature. That's just small variation between the temperature sensors, but you'll want to record those initial temperature values. In the background, you can see the hot plate. It's got about a, almost a liter of water in it. You can see the water's boiling. It's been boiling now for about six or seven minutes. So I'm pretty confident at this point that the temperature of the solid material in the test tubes is the same as the temperature of the water bath. Okay, now if we, the longer you leave it, I suppose, the more confident you would be that that's a true, a, tr a true statement. Now, the reason we have the solids in those test tubes is so that they don't get wet. What I need to do is transfer the hot solid substance, the hot copper, the hot glass beads, the hot aluminum pellets, to their calorimeters, but I don't want any of this hot water to get into the calorimeter. So we've got the hot solid substance in these large test tubes. I'm going to pour the solid without getting any of that water, the hot water, into our calorimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna do them in this order. We'll put the copper in first. Let me grab the copper test tube. We have little lids as well for the, cal for the calorimeters. I'm going to stick the temperature sensor through the, the lid um, into the, the water. So let me grab the first test tube of copper. It's not hot at the very top. So I'm going to take the temperature sensor out for a moment. I'm going to carefully pour all of that hot copper quickly into the, color into the calorimeter. Put the lid on and stick the temperature sensor inside. Now let's swirl. And as I swirl, you can see the temperature changing. You can, what you wanna do is record the highest temperature that it reaches. Now let me switch the screen here. I can show you a graph, okay, so not sure you can see that on the top. Actually, I just realized I didn't press stop. I didn't press collect, so I can't show you the graph. Let's just go back to the temperature screen. So when you see the temperature has reached a maximum and seems to have plateaued, I think we're pretty much there right now. So it's reached this maximum temperature. You can record the maximum temperature that the copper 
calorimeter reached. Now, I do have to be sure that the temperature sensor is in the water. Right? It's got to be in the water. So I'm swirling it to keep it well mixed. So I think we've reached a temperature plateau there. You can record that as the highest temperature reached for the copper metal. Now let me put that aside. Let's repeat this with the glass beads. So I'll take the temperature sensor out, grab the test tube with the glass beads. Okay, I'm gonna carefully and quickly pour that into the calorimeter. Don't let any hot water get in. Put the lid on quickly. Get my temperature sensor into the hot water. And look at the increase in temperature that's occurring. Okay, now I think what we want to get is a plateau. It reaches the highest temperature. You may have seen the temperature spike a little bit first. It's possible that the temperature sensor was in contact with the hot glass bead itself. But now the, this temperature appears to be the highest temperature of the water and glass beads. It seems to have plateaued. We're looking at the blue temperature there on the, on the iPad screen. Yeah, so that seems to have plateaued. I think we're good. And now our third substance, this time the solid aluminum. So you're going to look at the green temperature. Take out my temperature sensor and quickly pour in the hot aluminum pellets. Don't let any hot water get in there. Put the lid on. Tight fitting lid. And let's look at the temperature change. Now the, the pellets here are larger. So it's giving me some resistance as I stir. So maybe I'll just swirl like this. So you want to see the highest temperature that the aluminum and water mixture reaches. Okay, so we're almost there where you see it plateau. That'll be the temperature you record as your final temperature. So you can see just from you know, experimental evidence, the temperature rose to three distinctly different values. Now we have different amounts of water in the three calorimeters. We also had different amounts of uh, solid material, but of course they also have different heat capacities. So your job here today, if we assume that the, well, we know the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity of water, 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius, we know how much water we used we knew the initial temperature and now we know the final temperature of the water. Um, we also knew the mass of the solid substance. We knew its initial temperature, it was sitting in that boiling water bath. And we can assume that these temperatures are also the final temperatures of the solid substances that are in the calorimeter. So you should be able to use this data, there's your final temperature for the aluminum, to, um, to calculate the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity of each of these three substances. You could then look them up online and compare your experimental values to the true values, and you could calculate percent error as well, and think of some sources of error in the experiment here. All right, good luck with the calculations.